Welcome one and all to another Talk Truth Live series. I'm your host, Shanique Davis. And tonight we're going to be talking about a very important topic, something that is not so popular but not so common. And we are going to be debunking a lot of the myths surrounding what we call sexual abuse and incest. Yes. So thank you everyone for coming out tonight. Please remember to like and share the video to as many persons as you can. Invite everyone, leave a comment so I can know that you are here and say hi to the guests so that they'll feel welcome. So let me introduce tonight's special guest. So tonight's guest is from St. Catherine, a lush green parish in Jamaica. Yeah. She will be sharing a riveting and intriguing survival story, which highlights her traumatic experiences and sexual abuse from a child into her adolescent years. She has a remarkable story and her faith-driven journey will, has led her to recovery. Her loss now fuels her need to share her story with the world. Ladies and gentlemen, please make welcome tonight's guest, and purpose speaker, abuse survivor, Miss Latisha Parks. Make her welcome, guys. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Hi, Latisha. Thank you for coming tonight. How are you? I'm okay. How are you? I'm not too bad. I'm, I'm really happy to see you, and I'm excited to hear your story. We're all excited. I'm excited to share as well and to empower <laughs> others along the way. Amen, amen. All right, so we are going to start off unorthodox tonight. Now, Leticia is on the line. We don't normally do this, but I'm going to just start with her on the line now and with all of you here already with a brief word of prayer, and then we'll get right into Leticia's story. Let us mm -hmm. pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for tonight. God, you are amazing. You are wonderful. You are excellent. And there is no one else like you. Abba Father, we thank you that we are joined ears with Jesus. We thank you that you have given your daughter, your sweet spirit, that you have redeemed her, God, from everything that the enemy has had her held in. God, we thank you for the resurrection power that resides in your woman servant. I pray that as she opens her mouth tonight, God, you will fill it with words. I pray that each and every one here will be blessed. And I pray that God, ministry will be effective, self will be slain, and that God, you'll be lifted up in this place. God, we thank you for these and other mercies. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Welcome again, one and all. We'll be talking to Miss Leticia Parks tonight, survivor of abuse and incest. And she's going to be telling us her story now, it is very important that you pay attention because we are going to have a giveaway, giveaway. tonight. Yeah. So I don't know the question she's going to ask. So pay attention, people. Pay attention. All right. So let us start now. Uh, give us some facts about what sexual abuse really is. All right, so sexual abuse is, um, well, as the word says, it's a form of abuse. So um, it, it can be against a child. It can be against an adult. Um, as I normally say, it's also not um, gender biased. So it can be towards male or female as well. So that would be when someone engage in sexual activities um, with someone without their consent. And um, in terms of um, incest, because I know the topic is sexual abuse and incest, um, that would be when a family member has sex with another family member. And that is very prevalent in Jamaica. However, it is not really talked about. Um, it is swept under the carpet. So a lot of these things we don't know about. Right. Thank you for that. I remember you gave me some information with some very interesting statistics. I'm not going to ask where you got those stats from, but tell us about how it affects how sexual abuse are and our incest 
affects young people? All right, so sexual abuse and incest affects young people in various ways. One of the major um, ways that it can affect them is their self-esteem. Self -esteem. So um, it might cause it to be low, so they don't believe in themselves. They're not confident. They don't um, believe in their abilities anymore. And sometimes um, it can also lead people to... Um, do promiscuous activities as well. And um, some of them, because they're thinking low of themselves, they'll just allow anyone to use them from there on. Very interesting. So we're going to get into your story now. How has that affected you as a young woman? All right. So... Um, I wouldn't say at one point though, at one point, let me start there. At one point I was um, not confident in myself for the most part. Um, I started to think that if God can allow this to happen to me, then anything can really happen to me and I shouldn't even care. Um, I didn't trust anybody nobody at all and if you if you get too close to me if you show me that you love me if you start doing um things even though they are to be appreciated i start putting up a defense because you're if you're coming like that it means that you're gonna hurt me based on experience yeah. all right all right all right tell us a little more about how the story came about a test and testimony what kind of test was turned into a testimony? All right. So at the age of about 13, there about, um, my dignity was stolen, of course, by someone that I thought that I could trust, someone that I expected to love me, someone that I expected to care for me, to be there for me, to be my reason to trust other people. So that really broke me. Um, I was sexually abused by my dad, also physically abused um, and emotionally abused as well. Um, my dad would have been my step grandfather. Um, so there's a little backtrack to the story because he would have um, abused my mom as well and coming down the line and she had me and then the first time I met him, because I never knew him before this. I've heard the story of what he did to my mom. I was mad for some, po for some part. Um, I started to, I learned to forgive him over time, especially when um, my mom told me that I would be going to live living with him. At first I refused. I was like, no way. I'd go to farmentary and she was like, no, you have no choice. And that word also affected me because for most of my teenage years, I grew up thinking, you know, you have no choice. Accept what you get and that's it. Um, so she sent me to live with him. That was the first time I ever met him. I was going to start grade seven. Um, and um, the first attempt he would have made, and this is... Um, based on my, based on me looking at it and the type of person that I know that um, he is from what I would have heard. I remember one day I went to visit him. I was following my cousin. She wanted to get some lunch money from her dad, but my dad and her dad was living at the same house. And when I went into the room and I greeted him and he was like, lay down on top of me. Like, I was a bit hesitant and then I did it because when I just, that would have been um, a few months after I've been there. So he was treating me nice and I'm saying, okay, he's not such a bad person after all. Um, I have a dad and this and that and the list goes on. So I did it. And then um, he was asking me to sleep there and I was like, um, but I didn't plan to stay. And I'm going back up with my cousin and he was like, you know, no, so when you come down here, you must stay with me. I'm like, no. So he said, all right, go on. And he allowed me to go. Um, 
then his first actual attempt um so that was when i learned i started saying okay maybe i shouldn't trust this person after all you know because he look like he's leading that way again um then his first actual attempt was one night we were living in the hut at that time and for those of you who don't know what a hut is um it's a structure that you have on a farm farmers can put their tools in it and stuff like that and um we were in there one night on the bed because he had a bed there that's where he was living that's where he brought me to live to after a while and uh, i remember he took he pulled on my clothes and stuff and i started i was coming off the bed because he was touching me in a way that i thought was inappropriate i mean i was big enough so i know what would have been appropriate and what would have not been and uh, I was pulling off the bed until I finally got up. And when I got up, he started to get boisterous and he was like, lay down. Because he's very rough. Um, like when he licked me, I lightning me see and them things there. Very rough. And he told me to lay down back. So I went back and I lay down because he was getting angry. And he started rubbing his penis in between my legs. So that would have been the first actual attempt then um it was later down i remember um we had moved to a structure i tend to call it a structure because it had no windows no doors it was leaking and everything and i remember one day his sister came over to look for him but he was not there at the time and he when he came back, um, I was sitting at the step at the back door and he said, they were having a conversation. I don't part I don't remember what the particular topic was, but he said to me, um, you have to start the everything now, you know. So I looked up and I was like, everything? And he said, yeah. And then he didn't say anything more. When his sister left, he told me everything. All that way, I think too. And that was where the actual penetration started um it continued for a while um i was very afraid to speak i wasn't allowed to talk to anyone for that matter like i remember days when he sent me to the shop and even if the shop is full i have to get through before everybody because i have to reach back and if i don't reach back at a certain time he's gonna think that um something's wrong and then i'm gonna get a beating um my first attempt trying to talk about it i remember when we got home because i didn't i didn't i didn't end up telling the person that he spoke and my guidance counselor brought me home and he gave me a fine beating that night um later on in the situation we were moved up to his mother he was living in the cuba and all of that and um Hello? I can't hear you, just flip back the screen. Okay, so he was living on and um, everything was still going on. I remember one day, this was when I would have reported it, would have been about a year later or so. I remember he, I was in the bathroom my phone was in the living room in his mother's house because where the coop is, his mother's house is in the front of the yard. And he... Continue. And he... um. The phone, you know, like when you call one, two, three, I don't even know if they said that anymore. It was going, it was um reading that um automated system thing. And... Uh, um uh, something keeps happening okay so he was reading the automated system and i remember he called me from the bathroom and i answered him and he started cursing and all of that and uh, i said to him i'm not on the phone i'm in the bathroom and i remember when i got out he split a piece of bamboo in two and he gave me some beating like that was the worst beating of my life i had like some of the little things in me and stuff and i remember i went to school that day 
And after a devotion, they're about, I said to my guidance counselor that I need to talk to her. Because my guidance counselor, she and I were close. Um, and I, I, I told her the day. I guess everybody would have known by then because by the time she, we were coming through the front of the school, it was like this dead silence and everybody was like um, looking at me and staring at me. And so she even had to turn back to go through the back of the school and it was a it was a talk of the tone. Um, I went back seven days later because my grandma thought that it was just a seven day news. It would go away. You'd be fine. And I went back seven days later, but it was no better. I remember standing in the devotion, and it was just whispers here and there, and I didn't felt com I didn't feel comfortable. I didn't even stay at school that day. I went back home after devotion, and I was telling her that I wouldn't go back to school. Mm. So that's Latisha in a nutshell. <laughs> in a nutshell. What a big nutshell. What a nutshell. So I wanted to know what gave you the courage because most of the times when I hear stories like this or when many persons hear stories such as this, the, I don't want to say victim, but the person who is being affected the way you were. Mm -hmm. Doesn't usually want to speak about it because of fear. So what gave you the courage to actually report this? What was it? I don't know. I, I'm telling you, after that beating, it was the end of everything. I was like, uh-uh. I remember I went to school. I was so upset. I was in pain. There was lash, um, wheels and stuff all over my, my body. And I was like, okay, this is it. And I remember I said to myself, I don't care what happens after this. I guess I'll just die if I have to die because he told me he would kill me. So I'm like, okay, I'll just die if I have to die. I really couldn't take any more. It, it has it, it reached to a point where I guess that would have been my breaking point. I would have been going through this for an entire year. Mm -hmm. I would have, um, and it was not like the abuse, the, the, the abuse was far apart. It was so close. I was going through this for an entire year. I was in pain for an entire year. I remember um, going to school. When I when I reach school, I'm fine. And then by the time I'm going home, I'm already thinking. I'm already crying. I'm already mm -hmm. going through the motions. Yeah, and then I had to wash, cook, and clean for him. And um, I didn't even mention because I remember... One time, um, when I just went there, he was buying sex from a young lady. And uh, one time he said to me that he will have to stop buying it in order for me to go to school. So in that moment, I felt like a prostitute. So I had all of that dealing with. And then I had to wash for him, cook for him, clean, everything. So I was going through that for an entire year. So that would have been when my cup was full and it was my breaking point. And I'm like, Atisha. No matter what happens, even if you die, we're getting old. Mm. So that was your way of consoling yourself out of your frustration, your agony. You can't body, you can't take it no more. Like were you were you diagnosed with depression at any point? <laughs> I mean, I would have diagnosed myself on many occasions. Wow. And so many occasions I would have said, okay, this so must be depression. Sometimes I'm just crying and I'm just crying and I'm just crying. Um, I didn't really talk to much people, so I didn't really have anybody to relate to. Um, I didn't have friends because, I mean, there is no way I'm going to have friends with him in my life. School finished um, 3.45 and I have to be home by 4. I don't have a choice. So, so you said you and the counselor were close. How close were you? Because you see, you didn't really talk to anyone. But did you mm -hmm. have a, a, a kind of relationship where the counselor, he or she, could understand what you were facing without you saying many words? I think so. Because on many occasions, I, I, I would have never mentioned that. 
um, even if I say to her, I'm sad, I would never say why. Sometimes, because initially she saw me and she was saying to me that I look sad and so on and so forth. Initially, um, she, she, she would have done that. And I remember she asked me as well. And she even went as far to say, someone said that might have been the case as well. I, I could deal with people while I'm at school, but there is... Um, no one I could be with after. And then I wouldn't want to tell people that and then I have to go to school and I have to deal with them and then they would know that, oh my God, she's going through this. And I don't know the judgment and the ridicule that's going to come with it. So. All right. All right. I have more questions, but I'm going to check to see who is here because I see persons here. I'm sure they're here because of the intriguing story. So for those who are just joining tonight, we have Latisha Parks online with us, and she's telling us about her story of survival, her faith-driven story of survival, where she miraculously escaped sexual abuse and incest. So I'm going to do a roll call to see who is here. Good night again, everyone. We have... I can't pronounce her name here. Miss Thomas? Thank you for coming, joining us from YouTube. Coach Tammy is here. Good night. Elliston says, welcome. Franz Blake says, hi. Hi, Leticia. So, Tammy is tonight. Hi, Franz. Right. Hi, Tammy. Uh, good night. Excited. I'm feeling empowered already. All right, good, Ernie. All right. Lamar. Hey, Sabatine. She looks very familiar. Yes. <laughs> Sir Shane say, oh, Lord, I'm not going to. <laughs> you can't even read that. All right. What an ordeal for an innocent child. Can I tell you? And for those who have questions, That's exactly. questions, and I hope you are paying attention because the giveaway is coming shortly. So Lamar said, wow, this sad, this world that we live in just mess up. Uh, all right, so <laughs> yeah, um, is asking, where is, he, where is he living now? Uh, the last time I would have known about his whereabouts, um was when we would have gone to court and at that time he was sentenced so i'm not sure where he's as we speak yeah. interesting so from the church of god king street hi malache tamika says hi katie and says hi hi katie So prepare your questions, guys. So I want to know, no, what happened after you reported it? You said that your father was sentenced. What else took place? Were you relocated? Um, where is your mother? Where is your sibling? All of that, all of those things. What happened after that? Right, so yes, I was relocated. Um, um, the night, the night when when I reported it, and they they went for him. So we both slept at the station. <laughs> <laughs> nobody came for me i felt sad i felt unwanted i was like oh my god nobody came for me it's terrible so then the morning the police had to call again and they came for me and um i went to my grandma at first then after that i went to after she did the whole seven day thing and it didn't work out so she um i went to live with my mom and that's where I started um, McGrath. That's the school that I would have graduated from for my secondary education. My mom, no. Um, as we speak, she is not alive. Um, so she has two of us, my brother and myself. Uh, they both died in, a, in an accident. This year, September 21st and 22nd, 
would have made three years. Um, so they actually died like um, 10 days and 11 days after my birthday. Because I'm born on the 10th and he died on the 21st and one on the 22nd. So they're not here. In terms of my dad, I have um, other siblings through him, most of who I don't connect with. Um, yeah, pretty much. And my condolences to uh, you, That's okay, thank you. I have another sister. Um, well, she and I, from my dad's side, would have been the most closest. Mm -hmm. She would have been um, my mom's twin sister child. Mm -hmm. That's a whole nother story that we don't even explain. Yeah. We're both the same age, we're like twins. Uh, <laughs> we're born a couple of days apart. Okay, uh, interesting. Yeah, right. I know, right? Okay, so now tell us, how were you able to deal with the emotional trauma that came or probably set in after the report and the sentencing and all of that. How do you manage the emotional impact? So it didn't exactly affect me after, um, exactly after it happened, mm -hmm. because um, I was going to school. I didn't stop school. So when I joined um, McGrath, I joined like almost exam time. No other institution wanted to take me based on what my mom said, because it was exam time. So I'd have to wait and then repeat or something like that but that institution they took me was almost exam I did the exam I guess it was God's will that I passed I didn't focus on it then um I really wanted to um make myself better so it didn't affect me at that time I guess I wasn't really thinking about it and then school was already hard enough I remember at one point I was going to school and I was selling in the market. So I sell on Saturdays and then um, I sell sweets in the in the week mm -hmm. at school and biscuits. So first I started out. That's how I knew I was an entrepreneur. No? So <laughs> first, I <laughs> first I started off with um, with sweets. I remember I was buying the sweets at a wholesale in Linstead, and then um, I had two friends. So I started to meet people there, Chavelle and um, Cleverine, and um, they would help me to sell. And then I upgraded from sweets, and then I have biscuits, you know, like Moo and Brinky, and um, Bridge, and business was progressing. <laughs> and then on Saturdays, no, I would go to the market. I remember somebody bought me my first bag of onion, so till it turned two bag of onion, so till it be three bag of onion, I walk up and down and sell. I even had customers, can you believe? And repeat, customers. so I had so much, yes. <laughs> so I guess they don't buy too much onion the Saturday before, so they just buy exactly what they need, so they're gonna come back the other Saturday and buy onion again. <laughs> so, okay, um. So I would walk up and down, like from the front of the market to the back, and then I go out the road and I see some people along the way and they'll buy and you know. Mm -hmm. Um, so it was so much, um, so much that took my mind from it at that point. But I would say it affected me more after I finished school. Um, I was sad. Um, on many occasions I thought of killing myself because. What's the purpose? Even though I would have been, let's say, um, people are proud of me and I'm proud of myself to say, okay, through all of this, I didn't stop school. Um, I went on, graduated with subjects and all of that. But beside that, there was something on the inside. It was just not happy. It was, it was lonely. It needed help. It was just crying out. And I don't know if people were hearing I think some persons were. Maybe I wasn't receptive as well. Because as I tell you, whenever people try to get too close, I want to push you away. Because mm -hmm. I think your main purpose then and there is mm -hmm. to hurt me. And that is that is how you're gonna start because that is how I remember him starting. So you he got close. He um allowed me to believe that you know he has changed. 
that happened and we're moving on he's a different person and then he came on knowing that he had the intentions so whenever people try to get too close now um i i tend to build this wall up as i said earlier and then i started going um i started staying more by myself um people would try to talk to me you know to be honest but i'll talk to them this moment and i'm really out of it for the rest of the time yeah all right. But I hear you mentioned the entrepreneurship though. How long did you do that? Or did you just do it to like get your mind off everything? Did you do it as a means of assisting with lunch money or are you just enjoy doing it because you had support support of your friends? What was it? No, so it was a means of getting money to be honest. So I was a prefect at school. Um so um i would help the ladies in the canteen and then i guess maybe guidance counselors are my best friends so <laughs> me and the guidance counselor were good friends as well so i i was getting part ticket as well so that helped me to get some lunch in the day yeah. or there was this lady in the kitchen who miss mary she would always save lunch for me um yes <laughs> and then <laughs> like the so what i do my money for because um, my grandma would give me some money sometime like to go learn to go school at that time i was paying like i was traveling from kingston but i was paying like 20 dollars on the jutc mm -hmm. so yes i'm that old 20 dollars <laughs> me, me remember 20 dollars fear yeah, <laughs> so, so um what i would do i'd use my lunch money um for the rest of the week mm -hmm. So once I pay my fare and I get to Linstead, use my lunch money for the rest of the week and I buy the seats. And then that's how I go back to work to school for the rest of the week again. And then some can leave over for the other. And then my own money goes towards like my schooling and those little stuff. You know, um by that time I was in grade eleven and of course um SP and all of that and mm -hmm. no matter what's happening, girl have a pass. So yeah. Um uh at one point i also got some more assistance because when i would pay my 20 dollar come to spanish town on the jutc i had this teacher mr lindsay he would always um he was living in angels at the time so he would pick me up come to spanish town pick me up and then carry me to school and in the evening he'd carry me back drop me at spanish town him and his wife um drop me at spanish town and then i would take the bus back to kingston and repeat all right but it sounds to me like yeah you were already a woman basically <laughs> and the entrepreneurship sounds like you basically you let's had say a, i was forced to be and it, and it, it, from that I, I see that it birthed a strategy to survive because the onion money went to this and the snack money went to that so the right. brain you had brains <laughs> yeah you're very you're intelligent bad so i heard a key thing something really stands out to me from your story and that mm -hmm. is when you said that you and guidance counselors are very good friends i remember doing a previous live i was sharing a, a high school experience tony remember tony all right cool we're not go back in there so i was talking about how the guidance counselor summoned me this one single day out of the all of the school time when we did high school just to ask me what happened between me and the boyfriend or whatever and i was saying to the persons that were present that i believe guidance counselors have a duty to get to know the students first before you try to counsel them so that's the thing that really stood out to me when i say guidance counselors how important were your guidance counselors to you at the time what impact did they have on your life how did they help you to to cope in school with all that you were going through? Uh, they were very important. Um, and even after my mom died, the one from Magrat, she came there to check on me and stuff. Yeah. I mean, they were pretty important. And they weren't just 
know my story and then counsel me. No. They got to know me on all levels. I could go there and sit down. Just say, no, say, I don't feel like I'm in it today. Like, and we have a one, they would come down to my level, let's say. So you're not going to be a professional counselor in this moment. And it's, all right, so do this, do that, 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 that. No. They, 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 they got to the point where they knew me as a person, as an individual outside of my story. Mm -hmm. And they, they, they understood me. And that way, um, I think it worked better because they were able to relate to me. They, they understood how to deal with me. Um, how to speak with me, how to move from there on. Just taking some notes, I can ask more questions. But let me go over to the comments. <laughs> over to the comments. Let's see more persons talking. It seems that you're a real inspiration tonight. Ellie Santa, I don't go through anything. I thought my story was sad. Latavia said, Latisha, I love your smile. Keep smiling. It gives us hope. Oh, Lord. Thank you. I know about that selling life. Banana chips and Brinky. Yes, Brinky's life. Brinky still sell? Brinky still up on the earth? You know, so I'm starting the Brinky bigger now. So instead of the four, it start have six. Can I see one Brinky? Romaine says greetings. Hey, Romaine. Raje, good night, Shanique and Natisha. Good night, Raje. Good night, Raje. Broken to be blessed. Can I tell you? I think that's gonna be my my second to last question. Thank you, Ramin. Bless up, Miss Mary. <laughs> she know her. She know Miss Is it Miss Mary or Miss Mary? Me no know she know her. Maybe she know her, but Miss Mary, a good woman, and everybody know her. <laughs> so you guys, old man. We got Maga Magra. Maybe she went there, you know. <laughs> Most likely, maybe. You are an inspiration, very strong. That's Toya Campbell. Keita Burke said, if you didn't pay those bus fare, address these ladies by miss. I'm not going to hear from you, Keita, but thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the Tony story. Don't remind me. Guys, share the video. How do you now see men, given all that has happened to you? Why, Rajay? Um, in terms of how I see men, I don't judge them. I don't judge them because I personally know that everybody's not going to be the same. Um, I would have gotten to a point at first I could say, okay, I was like, uh, what are you for? I don't even need you. But then I've gotten to a point where I leave you to prove yourself. I'm not going to be the one to judge you. I leave judgment to God. And I've also gotten to a point where I said, okay, Latisha, you have to have a work. You have to have things. Because, <laughs> because um, when I look back, I would have said, okay, at that point, I was vulnerable. I didn't have anything. Um, could be used and abused and this and that and whatever. Um. But now I'm able to um, look at the situation from a different point. I'm able to um, assess it differently. I mean, it's growth. It's, it's still a work in progress. But one thing I just never do is to judge. So I allow you to prove yourself. Okay. I can't say I might never trust, though, but... <laughs> Um, in terms of in terms of saying you will abuse me and stuff like that, no, I leave it to leave it, to leave it up to you too, right? Mm -hmm. Do you have any male friends? Uh, yes, 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 yes. Oh, I do. Oh, you're friendly. <laughs> you're friendly. I'm thinking. <laughs> I was gonna say male associates, but then yes, I do. <laughs> I'm gonna keep it cool. Yeah. 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 And it's someone I can relate to as well. Like I can literally say, yo, you know what say? XYZ. And it'd be like, really? And I'm like, yeah, man. Yeah. Right. So that I think that has also allowed me the ability 
um, to assess it from a different point and also having um, my stepdad in my life mm -hmm. who, I, who would have taught me um, a different way to look at father figures. So, and other um, male figures in the church as well who um, they don't come to me a certain way and so they, they show me a different way to look at men and to look at dads as well. How not able to hear the, you. Sorry, how did you make the transition to becoming saved or having a faith in God? Was it, was it someone who evangelized to you? Did you get a dream? Was it a call? What was it? Um, oh, I would say I was I was baptized before I went through all of this. Mm, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think so. If my memory serves me well. Interesting. So when did you go back to go back to God, like recommit? Um, during during that um, time, I wouldn't say I was gone. Mm -hmm. Let's say I wasn't attending the church to which I was baptized. But during my time going through the abuse, going to school, mm -hmm. um, I would have been in a different location. But I wouldn't say I was gone at that time. All right. And was the the ordeal? Was it that one instance, or were there several other instances of abuse aside from daddy? Aside from him, uh, domestic abuse, um, a second advance at sexual abuse, but that didn't happen. But domestic abuse as well would have been one that I would have faced with my child's dad. Even, even while I was pregnant and stuff like that, yeah. Was he aware of your history? Yes, and personally looking at it after, I was like, you know, he didn't really appreciate me for who I am at that point. He, I think he did it based on my past because on different occasions he would have brought it up. So I was like, yeah, that was it. All right, all right, all right. Before I ask him a nearly final question, I see persons talking and other one persons to feel neglected. So after Reggie, we had Ernie Johnson said, this is powerful. Can't pronounce that name. Yes, she was. Marla Shea. And Millicent says, hello. Hi, Auntie Millie. <laughs> it's a blessing to have an overcomer like you to bless others. Um, with God in the vessel, you can smile at the storm. Just continue to fight, my dear. Indeed. Or dear Lamar. <laughs> Are you planning on going back to your high school to share your book and story? Definitely. I thought of it. Honestly, I did. Um, I haven't um, actually worked on it as yet, but I did think of it. It's in my planner. <laughs> All right, in your planner, you have ever think to become, what is this, lesbian, based on your story? No, honestly, no. Oh, God. All right, because I know that I've heard where persons, young persons, young females, after abuse, they usually turn to the opposite, the, the, the same sex. If they are abused by the opposite sex, a lot of them turn to the same sex. Well, um, even though while I was inclined on living with my dad, I wasn't going to my church and stuff, I would have been, um, I would have known God and know that, you know, it's really not right. Just like on times when I think of killing myself, but I know that if I kill myself, I have no lot in our path with God. So, yeah. And the word is ever present. Uh, well, I'm, <laughs> most time I always pray and I always say, all right, just make somebody come and kill me. But I came from back you know, because we don't want them. We don't want to see them. We don't want Philippines. Somebody stop the live and we'll come off. 
<laughs> because we would not have the opportunity to hear this amazing story tonight believe me i feel like i didn't go through anything i may not have went through that but compared to yours and i'm not trying to compare my life to yours we never got through nothing but i still thank god for your story obviously he was just allowing you to build up your testimony so you can be a, a beacon of hope according to latavia your smile is giving us hope Yes. Let's hear what Rajay has to say. He says that would you say your experience pushed you closer to Christ and made you more into the person you are today? Or do you believe you would have been where you are regardless? No, to the latter part. I don't think I would have been where I am regardless. I mean... Without God, we're nothing, if you look at it from that perspective. And then it wasn't just me, because, I mean, no man is an island. So we, we need people around us who are pushing us. So people from church, um, my auntie giving me the word. You know, like just the other day, Auntie Pat was just lecturing me, giving me the word, you know, feeding my spirit. It is things like these that I would have, that would have encouraged me. And these are persons who would have been close to God even closer than I am. They would have been um, in the faith longer than I am. And they would have um, spoken to me. They would have given me the word um, that I too can feel a sense of peace. So I wouldn't say that I would have been where I am regardless. But it is through God's grace and mercy that I am where I am today. Thank God. Thank you for that question, Reggie. It kind of sounds similar to my the, the last one. I'm going to ask. Thank you. Um, tell us now, in addition to what Reggie said, just tell us a little bit more. Or explain to us now. No one to explain. How does your story, let me put it this way, how does your story make you the woman that you are today? All right, so for one, it makes me um, believe more in a greater being mm -hmm. um, because I know, as I said earlier, I could not have done this by myself because following my own self, I probably wouldn't have been here where I am on this life tonight. That would have never happened. Um, it has also made me... more appreciative of certain things it has brought me to a point where um i started to look for the purpose in things i started to look for the reason mm -hmm. i'm not just be like all right god just kill me now can't take this no more no i started to look at it as a season i'm going through this for a purpose what is the purpose what is the reason all right god what do you want me to learn because you know what I would have learned throughout my life on many instances is that um, sometimes I'm going to go through the same things because when he had put me through the situation at first, I didn't learn what I was supposed to learn. Mm -hmm. So then he's going to bring me through it again. And then I learned that um, God is not going to bring me to something that he knows that I can't handle. He knows that I am strong. He knows that I am going to do this. Um, even today, I was looking at Job. You know, when when Satan approached God and say, um, "Let let me take everything from him because he's not gonna love you anymore. You only love you because you give him these things." Mm -hmm. But God said, "Take everything from him. Just not kill him. Take everything." And while he was going through it, that would have been um, his season of trials. Well, he's also. Um, well, Satan would have also been learning something about him that regardless of what happened, he's still going to hold on to the unchanging hands mm -hmm. of God. So, and then he he learned what he learned in the season about even the persons around him when his wife said, um, curse God I die. Um, so he learned what he learned about the persons around him. So sometimes God has to bring us through a season for us to um, learn about ourselves, learn about the persons around us, um, 
learn about or um our own mental state as well because um sometimes he wants to give us things but maybe we would misuse it we're not at the place to get it so these these things come and they test us and they try us and we have to overcome yes amen all right so how do you use your story of triumph now to to um mentor or evangelize if i if i should say that if you were to encourage someone here who has been to, through a similar ordeal how would you encourage them did you have like a scripture that 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 really resonated with you for that season was it a song was it a hymn was it a, a prayer structure for i know the plans i have for you plans to bless you <laughs> yes <laughs> yes I was like, okay, you foreknew me before I was formed in my mother's womb, despite of the situation that brought me into the world. Mm -hmm. You knew that it was going to happen. And you didn't let me die. Um, you brought me up to this stage. You also knew that I was going to go through everything that I'm going through in my life. And you didn't stop it. Because you know that at the end of it, I would have came out victorious. So... He didn't stop it because he knew the plans he had for me. So sometimes I'm, I'm feeling depressed and I'll be like, you know, the plans, the plans, the plans, <laughs> big plans. All right. Tell us now if you can describe your story in two words or two positive, affirmative words. What would those be? Two words. Um motivational mm -hmm. um awe inspiring as well all right too much and if i could add inspirational as well so right. <laughs> that's not three words no problem no problem i'm sure everyone who is watching will will agree i'm sure they would say the same things for those who have been here from the start Thank you for staying tuned because you know so the giveaway will come up right after this. <laughs> Still, I'm going to ask some more questions so we can get more into her story. I know that when we spoke previously, you mentioned a, a quote that you live by. You said, you don't believe that you should live an unlived life. Tell us more about, like, give us a, a kind of in-depth understanding beyond that quote you don't believe we should live an unlived life all right so after going through everything that um i would have went through i personally believe as you said that i'm not supposed to live an unlived life i don't think anyone for that matter should live an unlived life you shouldn't just be born on the earth come leave and that was it yeah you had a purpose. There was something on the inside of you that God placed in you that no matter what they took from you, no matter um, how they stripped you and took your dignity and um, they might have took your confidence for a moment or they took your, your ability to believe in yourself for a moment. Um, there was something that God placed inside of you and it's called your purpose. It is your own purpose. Nobody can take it from you. Nobody can take it from you. Nobody cannot misuse it except you. So it's that purpose that is placed in you why you should not come on the earth and live an unlived life. You just come, you just die, them just put you in one hole and that was it. No. Right. Maybe your purpose is not to preach, but maybe you can sing. Maybe you can dance. Um, maybe you can minister. Um, Maybe you can be the one just offering a plate of food to someone because God said, um, the least that you do for one of these, you also do unto me. So maybe you just have to bring the food to someone. Maybe you give someone some shelter. Maybe you give someone a motivational word. You don't have a lot of words to go up and preach and go on and on, but just that one sentence. Maybe you gave someone a hug, a smile. Maybe you made someone's day and you don't even know. You have a purpose. You don't just come here to just live and just die. And they just put you in a hole and they say, okay, such and such was here. And that was it. Amen. No, 
you would have left a legacy. You would have left something that can be held on to, something that people can remember you for. And while you're at it, it has to be something good. Because it is not the will of God for us to do evil. So something good. Don't just come here and live and merely existing and just die. And that was it. I think I have stir up something inside of me. I need a couple of breaths. Just a sec. Uh, something happened to me a while ago. It's but okay. It's okay. I am appreciative of your testimony. The last part there really woke up something in me. I've always heard that we should not not in those words, not live an unlived life, but we should not go to the grave to contribute to the wealth of the grave or the cemetery. We should die empty. We should do all that we have been called here to do. We have a we have a we have a natural purpose, you know, because yes, how I look at it, God is a God is God is an excellent manufacturer, he's an excellent potter, right? According to your story. And mm -hmm. so once we allow him to and once we abide by the manual that he has given us, we can live out our true purpose. But we're only glad to do something naturally good because we're meant to do it and we we'll do it good. But once we give that back to God, then we are living our truest purpose. So you just, you, you stir up something. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and yeah. Don't, um, what I can tell the viewers, don't hold back on your purpose because um, you are the only one giving. It's okay to give and not receive. Because when God is about to bless you, he's going to do it tenfold. He's going to do it multiplied for what you did. It's going to happen for you. It might not happen when you expect it to happen, but it's initially going to happen at some point. So even if you're giving off your last, give off it with a good heart. Give off it and not think of it. And even if you give it to someone and the person misuse it, don't be like, you know, say, my shudu di gishanik na mabula, because, see, she to it get a dog. No. You give it, you give it with a willing heart, it's gone. Give someone else as well. Don't hold on and say, you know, say, last time di gishanik mabula and she give it to the dog, so you know what happened? Me na give nobody else nothing. No. Shanik and everybody's not going to be the same thing. And you don't know what you might be doing for someone else. Maybe someone could have been on the last breath and a dark bullet saved them life. Just like how you might see people on the road and just because you smile at them and they smile back, you don't know how good it makes them feel inside. Maybe that was their first smile all day. So um, while you're going through, make a difference every day. And little is much when God is in it. So don't think that you don't have anything. So um, you know, I give nobody nothing. My uncle have this and my uncle have that. No. Give off your little because he will multiply. And like she said, guys, she you should try, strive to live a, a purposeful life. And your life should leave a good legacy. Your name should live on even after you die. Cool, cool. Don't just exist. Live, actually live. Make good use of the, the, the gift, the precious gift that God has given us. That's the breath of life. All right. Let's see what is here. Marlon says, "Good, God is good all the time, my sister. Blessing you. Hey, Uncle Marlon. Um, Purpose can never die, my dear. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy coming in the coming morning. To Guess who else is here? Money coin. Hey, money. <laughs> <laughs> That's my sister, guys. That's my sister. <laughs> Reggie, so you're, a, you're truly a blessing. Continue to walk in your calling, Latisha. Lamar says, very interesting question. Is everyone's purpose good? For example, Judas? I mean, he served a purpose. That was his purpose. If you think about it, you know, mm -hmm. if he didn't betray Christ, would he would have died? Would he really have died for the remission of our sins? 
Yeah, would we really be saved by the blood of Jesus Christ? If you think about it from that perspective. All right. So until we get some more questions now, I want to kind of go over more into what else is happening in, in your life now that you have survived so much trauma. Are you using your gifts? your knowledge and your experience and your expertise to help anyone, any youths maybe? Yes, definitely. Um, for most of my, most of my um, adult life, I mean, I'm, I recently became a real adult. <laughs> for most of that time, um, it was a part of my job at one point to go out and speak to young people on various topics that affect them. Mm -hmm. um i recently launched um my brainchild mm -hmm. yes it's called empowering youths for a purpose i personally and from my own experience and from talking to other young people as uh, young people as well mm -hmm. i would have come to the realization that um a lot of young people are not sure why they are here so you can ask someone at 12 or 10 what do you want to be okay we used to doctor and lie and teach on him some there so they might say that very few might say something else mm -hmm. and then you ask them at 18 um or 16 when they finish school what do you want to do and they don't know and then even at 30 because um remember you can be as young as you want to be of course so even at 30 some people have still not decided or realized what their purpose is. So a lot of people are in jobs that are not fulfilling, it's not happy, they're in homes that don't bring them any peace, but they're still there because they don't know why they're really here. So they just accept whatever. Mm -hmm. So no, my purpose would have been to help these persons, um, to speak to them, to, um, um, go through with them and to help them to realize their purpose. To say, listen, you're not here just to accept what you get. You are here for more than just that. Mm -hmm. So um, empower them. I do that. Um, I speak to them on different topics, as I mentioned earlier, and basically help them through. Help them to find a purpose. So don't think you're just here to just do whatever. No. There's something inside of you, as I said earlier. It's in there. It's burning. You just don't know it as yet. It's in there. So basically, from your life experience or trauma, you are here to empower youths, and you have been doing that for a number of years. Does your ministry have a name? Empowering youths for a purpose. All right. And that's EYP. And you said EYP, that you have right. with self-discovery, young people who are caught in between opinions. Self-belief, self-confidence. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, all right, all right. Cool, cool, cool. We have more questions. Some militants and motivation are <laughs> speak on all. <laughs> that means. My question is still unanswered. Is everyone purpose good? We all know the reason Judas had to sell out Jesus. You, you, is your purpose good, Lamar? <laughs> good but would you, um, Tanik or Lamar, would you say that, um, God, God who loved you so much, who formed you in, your own, in his own image, brought you here for a bad purpose? We can we can we can take out the scriptures, you know. God not have no bad purpose. So think about it, Lamar. All things work together for good. All things, including the good and the bad. We might see it as bad because a lot of the times God chooses to bless his people out of some really unfortunate situations, just like the one we heard tonight. Mm -hmm. And it's his good purpose and intention. For us, we and remember, you know, Shanik, you know, remember, he also said, remember that in the Bible, it is said that he there's two paths before us, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, it is not his intention for us to do bad, 
if we choose the bad path, it is our it is what we want to do because we have the knowledge of good and bad. Mm -hmm. But we have a choice. So he's not an unreasonable God where he says, all right, you have to do good. That's it. But he gives us a choice. There's two roads before us, good and bad. So Lamar, which do you choose? <laughs> <laughs> I can't deal with this no more. I come off of the live here. All right, so he says, you can't be as young as you want. Age can age never decrease. No, I, oh my God. I don't mean it literally, no more. <laughs> but I still think um, in your 20s, um, well, I'm in my 20s and I would say I'm a youth. Mm hmm I don't know. What do you think, Janik? You're still young. You're young like me. <laughs> the world we don't know his master plan. Exactly. But it's not without purpose, right? But Safari said, how important is it to understand your gifts and calling? Um, I would say it's very important. It's very important. If you don't understand it, you might misuse it. And we can bring that up in a lot of examples. So, okay. Maybe um, she need know that she can host, but um, she don't understand the purpose um, that God really wants her to use that skill for. Um, and so she does use it any old, do anything, or some things where, you know, it's so ungodly and so on. So it's very important to understand or give some calling. That's what I would say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> Any other questions, guys? Any other questions? Who is ready for the giveaway? We need some music. We need giveaway <laughs> music. I need giveaway music. But we don't want a copyright infringement. So let's sing it now on the mind or sing it at home, wherever you are. You have the question ready, Latisha? No, oh, not yet. Then thinking about it while we go along, we finish. All right, all right, we'll give you some time. <laughs> na, 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 na. Guys, have any more questions? I'm giving you like two more minutes before we start the giveaway. Na, na. All right, so tell us what the giveaway is going to be. And then, all right, let me tell you, let me say what the giveaway is. Let me just say it while right. you post the question. So, guys, thank you again for coming out tonight. We're not closing just yet. I'm just telling you thanks for coming out. Um, KDN says your purpose can be used in two ways. So, listen, says, I'm wondering if you are planning on writing any more books. Definitely. I'm working on one as we speak. <laughs> so this person says, just stay on the battlefield, Latisha, because God is not going to give you no more than you can bear. In the word of God, it says, I've never seen the righteous forsaken. And he says, if you walk upright with them, he's not going to withhold nothing good from you. God bless you. My word said that. The bad way or the good way. Calling, right? Calling, right? Who are you going to call? <laughs> who, are you, who are you going to call? Do you see your number on the screen? <sighs> call. Yeah, call. Of course they can call. Call and give me the answer so we can win. <laughs> All right, guys. So basically, Latisha has just given us a synopsis because the half has never been told, right? Oh Lord. Even as I said now, yes. her faith driven victory story, testimony, and I'm sure that we have all been motivated in one way or another. A lot of us can resonate with the hurt that we might feel. How disappointing it must be for someone that you trust to 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 abuse your right, right? Ab and take away your dignity for cause them to miss. To, to, to mistrust you. How, how, how disappointing is that? 
how hurtful it must feel for someone to not be able to speak about the pain that they are going through. I know that when we suppress a lot of the, the emotions that we feel, even as women, we are very emotional beings. And when we don't get to express ourselves, it feels like something inside of us is going to explode. Just imagine how Latisha had felt at the time. She's not telling us all of that tonight, but, you know, as I said, a synopsis of what she basically went through. So all of that, guys, I believe that with a ministry such as hers, with a testimony like hers, she has every right, and as the Lord has led her, to write that testimony into a book. She has compiled all of that knowledge and experience into a book and all the, the, the ingredients packed in there that God has given her to handle the emotional trauma and how she can encourage us all through her ministry in her book. And the title of that book is A Test Turned testimony by Latisha A. Hart. So I'm getting to the giveaway, Elliston. Just give me a sec. So guys, let me show you what the prize is going to be. So prepare on yourself, you know. Me not know the question, but I'm not going to answer. It's not going to be fair to anyone. All right, so let me take down. Hold on. Give me a sec. Take down this. In case anybody raise them, and I'm going to see it. Let me show you the prize. So the prize is a copy of her book. When did you release it, sis? Uh, June 14th. So today would have been a month. A month ago and you're getting this wonderful gift. So this is it, guys. This is what her book layout looks like. Isn't she lovely? Isn't she wonderful? <laughs> <laughs> but not exaggerate. a serious thing. So let her smile give you hope that you have a chance at winning one of these tonight. So she will let you know if you're the prize winner later on, how you can collect your prize. So you have your question ready, Latisha? Yeah. All right. So I'm going to exit temporarily. Do your thing. Come now, I'm out. Nobody the answer. <laughs> <laughs> it's one question, question though. Do you don't have to go. Don't worry yourself, man. I'm giving you the screen. It's a good book. Cool. All right. Do your thing now. All right. So, um, hi, guys. Um, the question based on, it would be based on everything that I said earlier. Um, what would you say is my takeaway word from all that I have said so far? Very simple question. So first person with the answer, you get yourself a copy of a test during testimony, which would have been celebrating its one month anniversary today and is doing a pretty good job. You can ask the question again or ask it in a different way. Is there any hint? Like people can get hints? I don't know if that's for more. Ah, would you want me to give them int? I wrote to I wrote a hint. Yes. Is that you, me no? And I me. People, she's asking you, do you want a hint? Indicate yes or no. Or make my collect the Or do you have the answer? I mean, they are scholars. <laughs> what is the takeaway word? Repeat it. Um, what is the takeaway word from all that I've said so far? There wow. is a word that stands out. Mm -hmm. And if you're really listening, I think it would stand out to you as well. Latavia says she want hint. <laughs> <laughs> three votes say so you get a hint. Three ah, votes. You can three try, Elliston. Somebody say how much for the book. She soon tell you. Let us know if you want a hint or not. Win. Who knows the answer? Lamar says purpose. Wait then. Lamar. Ooh, what, are, what is everybody saying? Latavia said purpose and motivation. Keep them That's coming, guys. Answers. 
take away the takeaway word. Come on, endurance, inspiration. <laughs> you guys are getting there. <laughs> inspiration. You're getting warmer. They get in there. They get in there. You know, no one has a no one music. No one music. Well, I'm there. What we said, something forgiveness are inspiring. Mm-hmm. That's it, Chani. Manashe said perseverance. Mm -hmm. Keep them coming, guys. Keep them coming. Keep them coming. Hint. Perseverance. It's seven letters. Encouraging. Seven. It's a seven letter word. People mm. that easy, you know? I mean, very I easy. Know, I don't mean, know. I mean, what the answer. <laughs> I don't mean, I know. Come, people. Come on. Come on. Come on, guys. Come on. Encouraging. And I can hear the jeopardy. Want to hear the jeopardy? <laughs> really? <laughs> come, guys. Come. Motivation and inspiring. Well, is Ellison asking who win? I don't know where my so you know, uh, survive. So seven letters, people. Seven letters. Any more hints on how you other question? Takeaway word. One takeaway word. Was it a word that you use a lot? <laughs> Would that be an next hint? <laughs> <laughs> It's, it made me sound like a scratch record. Purpose. Come, guys. Come. Nobody not get it yet, you know? Come, man. Hey, so you want, you want me to tell you who's the winner now? Somebody get it already? We just see what, see what, who else, what they have to say. Who is a madman? <laughs> All right. So... Hold on. Let me get some drum rolls. On already. And the answer is. Okay, so Lamar Davis, you've won yourself a copy of a tester testimony because the takeaway word is purpose. I think I've said it so much time. I kept saying purpose, purpose. <laughs> is that the answer? <laughs> I'm done. Um, other person started to send the answer after, so of course, well done, guys. Um, well done, Lamar. Love the participation. You said the answer is purpose. Yes. I am first a purpose, though. Yeah, that is true. Yeah, Lamar that was the first one I saw you bring. <laughs> Appear nice in my make Jesus sent my soul. <laughs> All right, so Latisha, go ahead and tell Lamar how you guys can meet or something to collect the book. But congratulations, Lamar. Big up yourself. All right. Um. Well, at, I guess we'd have to tell Lamar to contact me off here because I'd have to find out where he is and where we can do the pickup or so on. All right. All right. All right. Guys, thank you so much for your participation. Latavia left. Latavia, don't ah. leave. Latavia, don't leave. Don't leave. 
we have plenty more giveaways coming. Let me just say this from now. I'm doing something new here because I want persons to benefit a lot. So if I even me, I forgot to come up here and give one giveaway of my own book. Y'all know I write. So when y'all know they are here, but this is not about me tonight. But I'm saying that if we have another author, we're going to have another giveaway. So Latavia, please come back. And if anyone else has left, don't feel disappointed. If I know my book, if I know Latisha book, is somebody else book, ebook or paperback. Don't leave. Just stay and come again. I want to buy some one of your book. All right. Tell us where to get your book now, Latisha. And anything else that you want us to know. If your EYP is open for young persons who are being wayward at this time, how you can help them and all of that, I'll put your contact information on the screen. So, guys, there you go. Go ahead, Latisha. <laughs> so, the con the... Um, contact information that you're going to see, that is how you guys get the book. Mm -hmm. So you can, if you're in Jamaica, you can contact me. Of course, um, we'd work out delivery and stuff like that or pick up. If you're not, then you can get the paperback on Amazon for $15. Or you can get the ebook for seven dollars and ninety nine cents. All right, all right. And guys, get your copy of Grace. Um, there is this twelve day um step to a better you at the back, which um pretty easy steps, and they are practical as well. Not just something that I just picked up out of somewhere, but something that I would have used for myself as well. Um, and when you get to that part, um, cause a lot of persons say that when they, when they read the book, they have to just finish everything. They can't stop. So when you get to that part, it's one day at a time, not one hour for 12 days, one day at a time. And you can repeat because, um, change is best when repeated. So you can repeat it and repeat it until it sticks and, you'll see results because um, they're pretty practical steps, as I said. All right. Let's see who else is here saying something. Someone on this live. People oh, she wants to buy someone on the live a book. That's what she meant? Yeah, she says, some, I want to buy someone one of your book. And then she said, someone on this live. Okay. How does that work, Latisha? I'm not I'm not sure. That's Kadian. So Kadian, how does that work? You can send the instructions. Let's see. In this live, so Stacy and says, keep pushing forward. He gives beauty for ashes. Thank you, Auntie Stacy. Who okay, on this live so need one of your books? Katie oh. is offering to buy a book for someone else. I will pay for it. I will. So I guess show of hands. Yes, I have Kadian's info. So she's willing to buy someone on the live a book. Who else so. wants a book? Say it no. Latavia, if you're still there, you're safe. <laughs> Latavia says she wants it. Yeah. Oh, she said, buy it for me, please. Buy it for me, oh, please. <laughs> oh, Lord. I almost got myself killed. Lord Jesus. She was the first one who said it? Yes. <laughs> she alone. I thought she left. Because, you know, Latavia left. <laughs> Thank you very much for the opportunity from Lamar. And you get in touch with the person. Okay. All right, Kadian. And thank you so much for giving someone that opportunity as well. Me. Marla Shea, say me. La you say late, Marla Shea. Latavia, something there. Marla, say hi. 
Two to five. I. So Uncle Marlon is saying I, as in he wants the book. But because oh. I tell you the answer already. Hush, guys. Hush. I'm interested in one also. Inbox me home. Welcome. Yes, Kedan, I will um inbox you. She Lamar says, can, Lamar can collect mine. How okay. much is in Jamaica? Go again with the price. All right, so it's $2,500. How much you waste that? Um, what that? 15 Next year, fifteen ninety nine. My phone kept go from the US. <laughs> We'd have to check it. But in terms of the book that Kid and just bought, um, um, I would speak to her regarding that. She, I'd just give it to the person and she'd pay for it. She said. Is she asking the question again? Okay, cool. So Latavia said, "Thank you, Kadian." Thank you, Katie, and we appreciate your generosity. All right, guys, any last words before we let Latisha go? She said 2005 for the book, and online it you said 15 US. Yeah. And the ebook is how much again? $7.99. That's about 18 US dollars or so. Yeah. All right. So I, all the information, how to contact Latisha on Facebook, her email, author page, personal Facebook page, and Instagram is all on the screen. She writes the Inspire or Latisha Parks. You can reach her afterward if you all need to order any more copies right? Marla Shays, there's one more question all right we're in jamaica mm -hmm. it's available that's um well you'd have to make contact with me to have that um to have a copy thank you wayne I'm just adding a few details before I close. All right. All right, so I added, I inserted all the information. On, on YouTube, we have a YouTube page for those who don't know. It's Talk Truth Series. And it is specifically for persons who do not have a Facebook page or you don't want to use Facebook. You go to YouTube. All the information is in the description, and it's the same thing for, for Facebook. All the information that you need is in the description. We love, love you, Latavia. Come on. here. <laughs> All right. I love you too, Latavia. Latavia. Thank you for I, staying, even though you said you left the chat. Can I tell you? <laughs> but Latavia left. Now should I stay? All right, guys. Just pray up, continue to pray up Latisha. Ask God to cover her. I usually ask the guests to pray. But when I ask her for pray tonight, I'm just going to pronounce a benediction. And then y'all mm -hmm. can tell her good night. If you need to reach out to her to order her books, guys, or to assist in her ministry, all her information is on screen. And of course, it's inside the description. Thank you for coming and a great big thank you to Latisha for availing herself. Somebody pronounce blessing. I'm brain fail, Latisha. I mean, blessings. Yes, somebody did. All right. Thank you to those who, thank you to Kadian, especially. I'm sorry. Thank you, Kadian, for staying the entire life. You have been here since the start and noticed your presence. Thank you for coming out. And for buying a book for someone, thank you for that. Thank you, Latisha. Thank you, everyone who came on. A lot more surprises and surprises coming for the rest of the lives. So share and 
continue to be blessed. She said, you're welcome. All right. So, benediction. Mm -hmm. For those who don't want to... Give me final words before the benediction or after the benediction. Go on, go on, go on, go on, go on, go on. All right, guys. Um, so thank you for being here as well. Um, whether you're watching on YouTube or watching on Facebook, I really appreciated it. And um, you guys have been really interactive. You've been participating. I love the energy. It's great. Um want to encourage you guys for those of you who have been listening that um there is pain in your there's purpose in your pain so um no matter what's happening in your life instead of um being angry and stuff like that sit down go over it see what's the reason um because it's a season as i say as i always say and there must be a reason for it maybe god wants you to see something instead of complaining and saying why is this happening to me maybe you could say what does god want me to learn something like that and always be grateful guys always be grateful no matter how small something is no matter how much the world is tumbling down on you or what is happening in your life what is not going right be grateful for the little things that are going right all right uh stay motivated stay um empowered and remember that he got plans for you great plans i think we can close with that never mind you know what i don't know benediction. <laughs> there's no benediction well i'm just raise your right hand people. guys a lot of persons came here to support you tonight just give them a shout out those who will catch the replay, tell them thanks and all of that. Do you think? Uh, so Uncle Marlon, Auntie Pat, Auntie Stacy, love y'all. Auntie Millie, Malache, Money, my baby Money. Love you, girl. <laughs> um, Wayne, I'm not sure if Dane is here, but speak up yourself. Um, Auntie Ruth, I'm not sure if you're here. But you're a gem. Love you. Um, I'm not even sure who else is here. But everybody that's here, um, friends, anybody else from work, um, keep supporting. I appreciate it. Um, Lamar. <laughs> uh, I don't know you, but thanks for being here. <laughs> you went on with yourself. And Rajay. And Rajay. Ah, uh, who else was there? Latavia, who left. Oh, Latavia, who left the chat. Magar. Yes. Wayne. Yeah. Yes. Um. Let's see, I'm checking the comments. Oh, um. I'm not sure if my if my dad is here. Um, but if you are, big up, Romaine. You've been here from the start. I'm not sure if you're there right now, but if you rewatch it, um, thank you so much for being here. Uh, who else? Uh, if I don't call your name, guys, don't. Oh, Tavares, thank you so much for supporting. Hello. Kalina, doctor. Um, as I was saying, if I call your name, don't. If I don't call your name, don't feel any way. Um, I'm really appreciative of you being here. It was an absolute pleasure having you guys here tonight. I hope y'all learned something. I hope after tonight um, you look at stuff from a different perspective. You will work on finding your purpose, work on going about your life in a different way. And I hope that you don't host pity party and you remember that he has plans for you. I always have to say that. Yes, he has plans for you. So, pick up yourself if you were here. You guys were a good audience. Always. And, big up on the and if you're going to rewatch, when you're watching this, pick up yourself too. All right. Now for the benedictions. <laughs> All right, so you raise your right hands. <laughs> All right, so Come to you your right hands. I don't know. I me, me love the benediction. I'm sorry. I love it. All right. So, the peace of God, 
that surpasses all understanding. It rests with you all, remain with you all, abide with you all, both now until Jesus returns and the church, congregation, host of heaven, and everyone who is here, including myself and Latisha and my husband, say, Amen. Amen. All right. All right, it was great. It, it, it was an exceptional live, Latisha. Like me feel like me know you a long time. I like money coin. Big up your set. Me can't the name the stock. Um currently moving decorations from my latest pity party. You need to bunny. Please down. do, please do. Uh, pity parties are not good because you're not gonna get anywhere, you're just gonna complain and say, All right, this is why I'm like this, this is this, this is that. No, not good. All right, let's say that. No more pity parties, but guys, big up on yourself, Rajay say amen, my God says amen. Big up yourselves and mm -hmm. see you on the next live that's this Thursday. Um. I can't tell you what the prize is going to be for Thursday, but stay tuned. I might have something up my sleeves. You see them? <laughs> stay tuned, guys. Come again this Thursday. Same Talk Truth series. Same time at 8.30 p.m. Yeah, we have something special again coming. So, yeah. Thank you guys for coming out. Your presence is what makes the show what it is. Remember, it is not about the host. It is not about the guests. It is about the people who we are here to serve so god bless you all let it i pray that your sleep will be sweet tonight and i pray that god will continue to richly bless you and give it That's wisdom and courage. walk in your true purpose all right congratulations again guys and thank you kadian for being such a big support tonight god bless you sis and i will see you on your live eventually because she kadian is going to come here so I'll see her on her live eventually. So, yeah. guys, I'll see you on Thursday. And Latisha, of course, we will keep in touch. Definitely, definitely. Good night, guys. Have a great night. Night, guys. <laughs>